order, please. We'll now begin with the daily routine, beginning with presenting and reading of petitions. The Honourable Member for Argyle Barrington. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to table a petition with the operative clause. We, the undersigned, ask the Government of Nova Scotia to take immediate action to improve highway safety along the above-mentioned uh, section of Highway 103 from exit 32A, or 32 to 32A in the Argyle-Glenwood area by improving signage warnings motorists of the most or of the dangerous se section, improving signage in the turn lanes and reducing the speed limit to 80 km per hour along this dangerous section until a safe long-term solution is established. There are 272 signatures. I have affixed my signature as well as per the rules of this House. Petition is tabled. Presenting reports of committees, the Honourable Minister of Justice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as Chair of the Committee on Law Amendments, I'm directed to report that the Committee has met and considered the following bills. Bill No. 204, an act to amend Chapter 10 of the Acts of 1994-95, the Workers' Compensation Act. Order that these bills be referred to the Committee of the Whole House on Bills. The Honourable Chair of the Committee on Private and Local Bills. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as Chair of the Committee on Private and Local Bills, I am directed to report that the Committee has met and considered the following bills. Bill No. 183, an act to amend Chapter 80 of the Acts of 1975, an act to exempt the taxation, from taxation the property of the Digby Town and Municipal Housing Corporation in the Town of Digby. Bill No. 195, an act to amend Chapter 122 of the Acts of 1924, an act respecting the union of certain churches therein named. The committee re recommends these bills to the favourable consideration of the House without amendments. Order that these bills be referred to the Committee of the Whole House on Bills. Tabling reports, regulations and other papers. Statements by Ministers. Government notices of motion. Introduction of bills. Notices of motion. Statements by members. The Honourable Member for Picto West. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the quaint island of Picto will never be the same with the recent passing of one of its most caring citizens, Helen Lorraine McMillan. Lorraine was born on Picto Island in 1927 and never did she stray far from such a magical place. At the age of 38, Lorraine lost her vision, but this did not diminish the desire of this strong-willed woman to remain on Picto Island. Over the years, many would flock to Picto Island just to chat with Lorraine about the historical facts as well as her own personal journey of life living on an island. She was the foundation, the matriarch and rock of Picto Island. Anyone who was blessed to know her will miss this vibrant lady, but her memory will live on in the tremendous giving spirit of the island community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Anaganish. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I think it's uh, important for us to recognize uh, within our communities uh, our, our school athletes, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, earlier uh, this month, the uh, regional uh, competition uh, for cross country was uh, took place in Trenton. And uh, Anna Kanish performed quite well. I want to take a moment to, to recognize the Dr. John Hugh Gillis uh, intermediate and senior girls. Uh, both took home the regional banners uh, from Dr. John Hugh. Gillis, uh, also the intermediate boys. Uh, also from Anna Kanish, uh, St. Andrew Junior School took home the junior girls uh, banner. Uh, so all is said, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, for the regionals this year, 2019-20, uh, cross country, Anna Kanish schools uh, took home the junior girls, intermediate girls and senior girls and intermediate boys banners. And today, uh, Mr. Speaker, provincial cross country uh, championships took place in Trenton as well. So I uh, haven't heard how the results were, but wish all of the participants from across the province the best of luck. The Honourable Member for Sydney River, Myra Lewisburg. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to commend the Port Morian Wildlife Association as they recently received permission from the province to have an eagle carcass taxed or binds. The Port Morian Wildlife Association is a non-profit organization in existence since 1928. Their goal is to assist in sustaining a healthy environment to conserve the resources necessary for future generations to have the right to fish, trap, and hunt responsibly, and educate those in the importance of this. 
The reason this event was so significant is the Eagle will be used as a visual and educational presentation to inform the public on the effects of lead poisoning, as an animal killed with lead ammunition can be ingested by an eagle or other animal causing it to become very ill or die. Further, the Port Moran Wildlife Association will use this opportunity to share the culture, beliefs, and heritage of the Mi'kmaq people. I stand here today, Mr. Speaker, to applaud the Port Moran Wildlife Association on their dedication to this cause and all their programs and projects they are involved with and support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Halifax Citadel, Sable Island. Mr. Speaker, 20th of October 1940, fascist forces of Mussolini requested from Prime Minister Metaxa to be allowed to occupy strategic points of Greece. His response was no. The Greeks fought the Italians so valiantly that the German army had to assist. For 219 days, this small country resisted occupation. Delaying the German army, they were annihilated in Russia that winter. This country changed the course of history. Let's try it in Greek. Κύριε Πρόεδρε, 28 Οκτωβρίου 1940, οι φασιστικέ δυναμίε του Μουσολίνη ζητήσαν από τον Πρωθυπουργό Μεταξά να του επισπρέψουν να μπουν στην Ελλάδα. Η απάντησή του ήταν το θρηλυκό όχι. Οι Έλληνε πολεμήσαν του Ιταλού τόσο δυνατά που έπρεπε να έρθουν οι Γερμανοί να του βοηθήσουν. 219 ημέρε αντιστάθηκε αυτή η μικρή χώρα. Καθυστέρησε του Γερμανού και διαλυθήκανε τον χειμώνα στη Ρωσία. Αυτή η χώρα άλλαξε την πορεία τη ιστορία. Ευχαριστώ. Honourable Creations. Many of these can be found behind the garden centre, strategic, strategically placed, and a sculpture garden to be enjoyed at any time by locals and visitors alike. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to acknowledge Ivan's work here today and thank him for so freely sharing his creative gift with all who live and visit our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Hans East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've heard it said that volunteering doesn't necessarily mean that you have the time, it simply means you have the heart. This quote brings to mind ded the dedication of the President of the Royal Canadian Le Legion Branch 111 from Shibanaki, Susan Smith. Susan has been a member of the Legion for the last 16 years and has dedicated countless hours to the Legion and those in her community. See, uh, serving as president intermittently for over six years, Susan follows the same principles as the Legion does, serving her community while remembering those who serve and still serve our country. She has helped host an array of different fundraisers such as delicious dinners, trivia nights, and other creative ideas in the spirit of raising money to help out veterans and those in need in the Shibanakati area. During the Poppy Campaign in November each year, she has personally placed hundreds of flags on the graves of soldiers at local cemeteries, ensuring those who are gone but not forgotten. A small gesture with an incredible impact. She takes great pride in helping others and feels compassion about giving back to her fellow community members. If she's not planning events for the Legion, she's looking for other ways to help her community. I would like to ask all members of the House to join me in thanking Susan for all her years of volunteering and enriching the lives of the community members. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Sackville Cobbequay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to congratulate the organizers of the Summer Nights Community Barbecue, which took place at Acadia Park and Hall in Lower Sackville on August 30th, 2019. The Summer Nights Community Barbecue has taken place for the last 10 years. I would like to applaud Mr. Marvin Upshaw, owner of Ascension Barbershop in Lower Sackville, who, in conjunction with the Cobbequid Youth Health Services, makes great efforts each year to ensure this event takes place. This free event was open to everyone in the community. It consisted of musical entertainment, children's games and prizes, followed by a movie in the park. Mr. Speaker, I would ask all members of the House of Assembly to join me in congratulating Mr. Marvin Upshaw and the volunteers involved in the annual Summer Nights Community Barbecue event for their efforts to ensure this enjoyable event continues every year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Guysboro Eastern Shore, Trackety. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in recognition of the Geisel Memorial Hospital Auxiliary for their fundraising efforts and dedication to those served by Geisel Memorial Hospital. Hospital auxiliaries across the province work to improve the care and comfort of patients and enhance programs and services. Auxiliary members and volunteers dedicate hundreds of thousands of volunteer hours annually to raise funds for needed equipment, bursaries, and other important programs. They also provide valuable services such as the operation of hospital gifts and coffee shops. For more information about membership or to donate, contact a local auxiliary. Recently, the Guys Memorial uh, Hospital Auxiliary put on an exceptional Easter-themed bake sale, sale held at the Guys Legion with lots of tasty treats available for purchase. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank all the dedicated members of the Guys Memorial Hospital Auxiliary for their contribution to the care and comfort of patients and their families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Cole Harbour Eastern Passage. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to give special recognition to the Eastern Passage and Area Business Association at the end of Small Business Week. This is a week that recognizes the small and medium-sized businesses within our communities. Small businesses make up 99.7% of all businesses in Canada and play an important role in the economic growth of their communities. This week was designed to promote, network and showcase entrepreneurs across the country. I ask all members of the Nova Scotia Legislature to join me in recognizing small business owners in the Coal Harbour Eastern Passage constituency, especially the Eastern Passage and Area Business Association board members, President Misty Ramier, Vice President Megali Gregor, Treasurer Jody Wood Kaiser, Secretary Karen Noble, Social Media and Membership Director Mel Zilkowski, and Ethics Advisor Natalie Schofield. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Halifax, Armdale. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to send my best wishes to Joyce Merrill Wood, a resident of Armdale, as she celebrates her 95th birthday. Born Joyce Berry on December 21, 1924, she grew up just outside of London, UK, in Woodford. Following her studies at the London Hospital, she graduated as a state registered nurse in 1943. At that time, the need for help was overwhelming, the war was raging, and soldiers were returning from the battlefield daily with grave injuries. Joyce cared for those who made their way back to London and is one of the few remaining of her generation who experienced the horrors of that conflict in their youth. With the war's end, she married William Wood and turned her caring eye to her family. The Woods have three children together before immigrating to Canada, first settling in Burlington, then Upper Ten Talon, and now in Armdale. I ask all members of this historic House of Assembly to join me in congratulating Joyce Wood as she celebrates with family and friends this tremendous milestone. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Victoria the Lakes. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to stand in my place to recognize and congratulate Escazoni's Aaron Denny for once again being named to Team Atlantic for the 2019 National Women's Under-18 Hockey Championship. Erin has demonstrated both her abilities and leadership skills over the years and continues to do so as the captain of the McIntyre Chevy Panthers of the Nova Scotia Female Midget AAA Hockey League. She will be joined by another Cape Bretoner, Madison Corbett of Sydney. I ask all members of the legislature to join me in wishing Erin all the best in this year's championship, her season with the Panthers, and all her future endeavors. Keep up the good work, Aaron. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Dartmouth South. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize Coulter Simmons, one of the three recipients of this year's Basketball Nova Scotia Frank Baldwin Award. We're lucky that Coulter currently works at the Zatzman Sportsplex as the Child, Youth and Sports Coordinator, where he is focused on building up the Teen Takeover program. But he has a long legacy of working with youth in Nova Scotia. He's coached basketball in three metro high schools and for the past 20 years has run the not-for-profit We Will Win Youth Association, where he works with youth at risk to develop a strong commitment to community and athletic and academic achievement. Coulter was nominated by his community for his efforts to grow the sport of basketball in Nova Scotia and as a dedicated mentor in the community. Please thank me in joining Coulter Simmons for his long-term commitment to youth in Nova Scotia. The Honourable Member for Timberley Prospect. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize Jamie Allison, an instructor at the Nova Scotia Community College Kings Tech campus. Under the direction of Jamie, the students in horticulture and landscape technology grew a variety of beautiful, healthy native plants and shrubs for use in our beautification project in Goodwood. 
propagation course is taught by Jamie focus on reproducing plants from cuttings, grafting, and seed. The plants donated to the project were mainly Indigenous plants propagated from plants on campus and grown at the Kingstick Nursery Facility. Careful consideration was given to designing and growing native plants that would provide an aesthetically pleasing landscape, while at the same time require little to no maintenance. The shrubbery is hardy to our region, capable of surviving winter conditions, and displays a four-season interest. The shrubbery was also chosen specifically for the conditions prevalent in the project area. Jamie's knowledge and expertise in horticulture helped to support our project by promoting land stewardship in an attractive and environmentally friendly manner. Mr. Speaker, I ask the members of Nova Scotia Host of Assembly to join me in thanking Jamie and the NSCC Kingstech campus for their overwhelming ger generosity and support for our community project. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Pictou Centre. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Lyme disease in this province is unfortunately commonplace. According to a recent Harvard Medical School blog, Lyme disease is probably the most well-known disease for which a diagnosis and treatment are most controversial. Several countries around the world, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, have thousands of reported cases of Lyme. Lyme disease is life-altering, keeping those affected from enjoying a reasonably healthy lifestyle, unable to work, and suffering daily pain. It is definitely time to recognize that we are dealing with a serious disease and we can no longer continue to offer lip service. Two U.S. Lyme disease specialists held two workshops in Pictou County last month. This was an effort to educate health officials and local <coughs> residents about the importance of quick diagnosis and proper treatment in this province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Hammonds Plains, Lucasville. Mr. Speaker, October 27th marks the annual Hindu Festival of Lights, better known as Diwali. It is one of the most significant traditions in Hindu culture. Mr. Speaker, it symbolizes light over darkness, good over evil, and knowledge over ignorance. I would like all members of the House to join me in wishing everyone a blessed and happy Diwali. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Dartmouth East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise this evening to recognize Dr. Jason Yu, who has just opened a new business, the Dartmouth Podi Podiatry Foot and Ankle Clinic. Jason opened the business just this past April. With roughly a decade of experience, Jason is an, ex an experienced podiatrist who specializes in managing diabetic foot concerns. Not only does Jason treat his patients, but also educates them on proper at-home care practices, as well as how to manage pain. Mr. Speaker, Jason has worked extremely hard to create a comfortable and welcoming environment which all clients can appreciate. I applaud Dr. Jason Yu for his tireless work that allows clients to leave their appointment, appointments with a spring in their step. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Halifax Atlantic. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, every August the community of Sambro comes alive for Southwestern Days. I know some people in this uh, legislature have seen a few familiar faces there. Uh, this multi day celebration celebrates everything Sambro, from a ball tournament to a dance to a parade. Uh, there is lots to do over the four to five day celebration. Mr. Speaker, countless hours go into uh, making Southwestern Days work. Uh, I'd like to thank Lori, Leslie, Sarah, Natasha, and all the volunteers that make this happen. Without their hard work, uh, we wouldn't be able to celebrate everything Sambro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Kings North. Sorry, I didn't know you were getting up. Mr. Speaker, I rise. I rise today to recognize Laura Churchill Duke, who has made a significant positive impact in our local community and deserves recognition for her work and accomplishments. Laura lives in Kenful with her husband David, two sons Daniel and Thomas, and a number of rescue animals. She is the creator of the Family Fun website, a highly used resource by local families to see what programs and events are available in our area. She is a freelance journalist for the papers like The Advertiser and Grapevine. She's a professional organizer with your last resort home organization, a company she created with her friends and colleagues. She is the current president of the Kings County Academy Parent Teacher Association. And most recently, she's become a published author of her book, Two Crows Sorrow, a work of creative nonfiction about a true story of a North Mountain murder. Please join me in congratulating Laura on her recent success and wish her well in all future endeavors. The Honourable Member for Kings South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in recent statements to this House, I've wanted to bring attention to the small and medium-sized business owners who make small towns like my home community of Wolfville thrive. 
If you're an outdoor enthusiast, you will know the store, We're Outside, which has been operating for the past 15 years on Wolfville's Main Street. Owner Brian Adams has focused on selling quality outdoor clothing and products combined with excellent service. This has earned him many loyal customers throughout Nova Scotia. Brian also puts his products to the test each Saturday morning by leading hikes in the area affectionately known as the Pain Train. Retail store owners face a host of challenges these days, so it's important to celebrate when a business that focuses on quality pro products and face-to-face -face service excellence is so valued by its customers. I invite all members of the Nova Scotia House of Assembly to join me in thanking Brian Adams of We're Outdoors for his commitment to creating a successful and very special small business in Wolfville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Pictou West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to acknowledge the efforts put forth by the residents of Pictou to bring new life into the town by brightening the streets with beautiful yards and gardens. One good Samaritan that stands out is Stephen Knowles. Stephen has, for years, taken it upon himself to spend his free time working on the gardens surrounding Colorine Plaza. The yards are always perfectly weeded and trimmed. From year to year, they are appreciated by the many tourists and locals choosing to take a stroll through downtown Picto. I thank Stephen for his years of hard work and dedication to the improvement of our town. It is work like this that is truly noticed by the residents and will be for years to come. Thank you, Stephen. The Honourable Member for Dartmouth North. Mr. Speaker, I rise to pay tribute to Kelly Wilson, who was my constituency assistant from June 2017 until July of 2019. Kelly has served the people of Dartmouth and also many folks in Halifax for many years, working as a constituency assistant in offices for several political representatives. Federally, she worked with MPs Alexa McDonough and Megan Leslie in Halifax and Wendy Lill and Robert Chisholm in Dartmouth Coal Harbour. She also worked in the Dartmouth South MLA office with Marion Mancini. Most recently, Kelly worked in the Dartmouth North office. She expertly set up the office and then stayed on for two very uh, busy, very full years. Through that time, she helped countless people access government services, find other services in the community, and often simply listen to their frustration and anger when things were not going their way. Whenever I was out in the community, someone would pull me aside and say, that Kelly, she's amazing. Uh, she retired at the end of July. She plans to travel and spend more time with her family. She will be missed immensely by the folks she served in the community and by me. And I ask all members of the House to join me in thanking Kelly Wilson for her dedication and service and in wishing her a very happy and relaxing retirement. The Honourable Member for Lunenburg West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize the South Shore Robotics team from Bridgewater Junior High and Parkview Education Centre. The team, including Adam Culpert, Evan Kinsman, Aditya Kondaporam, Ellie Langel, Theodora Milos, and Sierra Ann O'Brien, and teacher Byron Butt, competed in the 2019 Marine Advanced Technology Education International ROV Competition last June in Tennessee. Some of the brightest minds from around the world competed at this event with remotely operated vehicles that they designed and built. The South Shore team's impressive underwater ROV, the SS Enterprise, competed in the Ranger level against 45 other teams. It was tasked to complete four real-world scenarios that included lifting a heavy cannon off the bottom of a pool and scanning a dam for cracks and holes. Adam Culpert said that we did our best. With such few teams in Nova Scotia, we are in a bit of a bubble. So the most rewarding part was learning from other teams and sharing different solutions to problems. We are motivated to be even more competitive. Mentor Byron Butt added that the students were ambassadors for our province, handling themselves with dignity, warmth and kindness to others. Congratulations to the Social Robotics team. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Queen Shelburne. Mr. Speaker, while in grade 9, North Queen's community school student, Zeke Westaver, decided that it was a good idea to build a skate park in Caledonia. Zeke reached out to me as his MLA and to his counselor, Gil Johnson, and I was thoroughly impressed with his resolve to make the skate park happen. Zeke and his mother, Bobby Jo, developed a proposal, secured a site and, a skateboard, and skateboard infrastructure from a neighboring community, and they set out to make Zeke's dream for his community a reality. 
In August of this year, ZNW Skate Park officially opened. Mr. Speaker, I am so proud of this young man and ask all members of this House to join me in congratulating Zeke, Bobby Joe, and all who supported them in making this project come to completion. Zeke should serve as an example to us all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Bedford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to take a moment to commend a stalwart volunteer at our local Legion branch. Gary White has been deeply involved in volunteering at Bedford Legion Branch 95 for over 23 years. He's the kind of guy who notes what needs to be done and then he does it. His leadership qualities and attention to detail are integral to the success of the Bedford Legion. For example, in 2007, Gary took over the chairmanship of the weekly bingo, which had been struggling financially for several years. Over one year, he reorganized the event and turned it into the main source of income for the branch, and he's still the bingo chair to this day. He's also been branch president for five years and building chair for five years. Not surprisingly, Gary has been much lauded for his dedication to our local Legion. He holds a Legion Life membership, and he's won Legionnaire of the Year twice. He's been awarded a branch service medal and an officer's medal, as well as many certificates of merit and appreciation. And I'd like to join in the many voices who have thanked Gary for all his service. He really is one of a kind. The Honourable Member for sackville Cobbequid. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to congratulate the dedicated staff, volunteers, sponsors, and participants of the Cobbequid Community Health Centre Foundation's 26th annual walk run for the health of our community which took place this past weekend, yesterday, on Sunday, October 27th, 2019, in Lower Sackville. Over the past 26 years, the walk run has raised over $1.4 million, which has gone directly to the Cobbequid Health Centre to fund priority medical equipment and facility improvements. Mr. Speaker, I would like to ask that all members of this House of Assembly join me in congratulating the staff, volunteers, sponsors, and participants of this year's walk run for the health of our community and thank them for their efforts to bring the community together to support health care needs while encouraging healthy and active lifestyles. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Colchester North. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Speaker. On June 12, 2019, Megan McNeil from Great Village, Colchester North, delivered a moving speech for the NSCC Class of 2019 at the Truro Rath East Link Community Centre. Megan, who had previously earned a university degree in social services, <coughs> completed a two-year course at NSCC, and during those two years, she worked 20 to 40 hours a week, gave other students private tutoring, spent time with her husband, as well as his family and her family, and battled clinical depression while doing all of this. In her valedictorian address, Megan expressed great praise to the faculty, professors, and counselors for what she called their phenomenal help with her lifelong struggle. She urged other students to take advantage of the excellent help that is offered there. In her captivating speech, she showed how she took inspiration from Disney characters, leaving her fellow graduates with a, a quotation from Dumbo, don't just fly, soar. Megan plans to continue her work with Mi'kmaq families, and congratulations to Megan, and may you continue to be an inspiration to others. The Honourable Member for Cole Harbour, Eastern Passage. Mr. Speaker, October is Canadian Library Month, and October 18, 2019 was Canadian Library Workers' Day. I rise today to bring recognition to an extraordinary librarian, Deborah Copeman of Southwood Side Elementary School, for all of her hard work in coordinating with myself and the whole community to bring a free bookshelf centre to the school. This bookshelf holds importance as the students will have access to books outside of their assigned library time. Camp Building Supplies graciously donated all of the materials and students from the Island View High School built the bookshelf to be donated. Literacy and the process are fundamental in education and earning competency in all subjects of learning. Uh, Value Village also donated books as did the entire community. Uh, today we launched the Free Bookshelf Centre and it was heartwarming to see how excited the kids were when they told, were told they didn't have to bring the books back. And when they said, can we keep them? And I said, yes. And they said, how long? And I said, forever. And it was just priceless. I hope to see the Bookshelf Library Initiative make roots in other schools across Nova Scotia. I ask all members of the Nova Scotia Legislature to join me in thanking Deborah Copeman for her dedication to literacy and for all of her help with this local Bookshelf Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Claire Digby. 
<clears throat> Mr. Speaker, in communities across the country, people have sought ways to communicate with each other. Before the internet and television, people learned the news through newspapers as a weekly petite courier de Sud-West. This paper was first published by Desiree Dion and distributed in southwestern end of the province in 1937. In 1972, to reflect the new provincial mandate of Le Courier to develop links between all Francophones and Acadian communities of Nova Scotia, the name of the paper was changed to Le Courier de nouvelle Écosse. Since then, in a time when the way of people communicate and form themselves has changed dramatically, dramatically Le Courier has evolved to strive to remain relevant and French -speaking, to French-speaking people of the province. In 2019, the Association de la Presse Francophone, a Canadian network of French language newspapers published outside of Quebec, recognized Le Courier as APF's Prix d'Excellence de la Presse Francophone 2019 in the category Special Project of the Year. Congratulations to Francois Robichaud and his team at Le Courier. They are continuing to inform their readers as Desiree Dion did many, many years ago. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Victoria the Lakes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, this country and its citizens will be commemorating the end of World War I. We will take time out of the day remembering those brave men who fell and all those husbands, sons, and brothers who fought. We will also remember those who sacrificed, defended, and fought for our country in World War II in Afghanistan. As the bugle played last post and chorus, the old men stood up proud and tall. But year after year, the numbers get fewer. Someday, no one will stand there at all. But we shall never forget them, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Chester St. Margaret's. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to congratulate Monica Miller of St. Margaret's Bay and her support kayaker, Heather Lane, who took part in the Give to Live's Big Swim, which took place August 18th in the Northumberland Strait. This year's approximately 13 kilometer swim was in support of Brigadoon Village, which delivers transformational camp programming to Atlantic Canada children, youth and families <coughs> living with health conditions or other life challenges. Monica first thought of swimming in the Big Swim many years ago, but was somewhat afraid of swimming in deep water, not to mention the creatures that might lurk there. She also felt that she was not a strong swimmer. However, after much training, on August 18th, Monica and 43 other swimmers dug deep, braved the cold and the black water, and went for it. They raised a total of $160,000. Mr. Speaker, I invite the members of the House Assembly to join me in congratulating Monica Miller, daughter of our own Margaret Miller, her support kayaker, Heather Lane, and all the swimmers and support kayakers who participated in this year's Give to Live's Big Swim in support of Brigadoon Village. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. I'd just like to remind all members uh, not to mention other members of this assembly by their proper names. The Honourable Member for Cumberland South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to congratulate Ken Brunell, pharmacist and proud owner at the Oxford Pharmac Pharma Choice and Spring Hill Ross Anderson Pharma Choice. Ken is the 2019 recipient of the Pfizer Consumer Health Bowl of Hygieia Award, I hope I pronounced those words right, which were presented, by him, presented to him by the Nova Scotia Pharmacy Association. This award is presented annually to a pharmacist in each jurisdiction in Canada and the United States to recognize their outstanding services to the community. I ask you in joining me congratulating Ken Burnell on the outstanding achievement and continued service with his staff in the communities of Oxford and Spring Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Government House Leader. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Further to a discussion with uh, my colleagues, the opposition ho House leaders, I'd like to ask the House for uh, the unanimous consent of the House to revert back to presenting reports of committees. Is it agreed? It is agreed. We'll now revert back to presenting reports of committees. The Honourable Minister of Justice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as Chair of the Committee on Law Amendments, I'm directed to report that the Committee has met and considered the following bills. Bill number 213, an act to achieve environmental goals and sustainable, sustainable prosperity. The committee recommends this, this bill to the favourable consideration of the House without amendments. 
Order that these bills be referred to the Committee of the Whole House on Bills. We'll now go back to member statements. The Honourable Member for Anaganish. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, last night uh, I had uh, the privilege of uh, joining a number of uh, constituents uh, at uh, our local uh, Royal Canadian Legion Branch 59 in Anakinish. Uh, it was a, a kickoff uh, and a first uh, event of, of its kind in Anakinish anyway uh, to kick off uh, the Remembrance uh, season. Uh, our local uh, Legion Branch 59 partnered with uh, Megan Jack, an assistant professor of anthropology at St. Evex University, and her uh, students, as well as Pier 21 and the Anakinish Dutch Society, uh, to host a pop-up museum at the Legion, uh, where uh, people from the community uh, participated in bringing a number of uh, artifacts uh, that they had in their personal uh, belongings, uh, commemorating their, their time and recognizing their time uh, in uh, the Netherlands uh, during the uh, the war and uh, uh, people from the community uh, came together uh, to uh, reflect on these uh, artifacts uh, and discuss uh, the uh, war and uh, and the uh, immigration to Canada. It was a great event, Mr. Speaker, and I thank all involved. It was a great uh, way to kick off our remembrance season. The Honourable Member for Dermot East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise this evening to recognize two wonderful members of the Dartmouth East community, Zach Abbott and teacher Jennifer Oldford. During the month of June, Zach chose to complete his final grade 12 art project, the Legacy Project, in the Dartmouth East office. During a mixture of art classes, off blocks and free time, Zach and his art teacher, Miss Oldford, came to the Dartmouth East office and painted a beautiful mural. The image overlooks the water and walking trails of Shuby Park. Mr. Speaker, I'm extremely grateful to Zach and Jennifer who undertook this project and I could not be more excited to have this beautiful project displayed in our office. It wouldn't have been possible without them. I want to thank Zach Abbott and Jennifer Oldford for their outstanding work in the Dartmouth East office. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Guysboro Eastern Shore, Trackety. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to cheer on the Shedabuckter Curling Club of Boylston for earning a Nova Scotia Curling Association Award for being the Organization of the Year. Having received this award before in 2015, the Curling Club was determined to build on their success, and they have. The Shedabuckter Curling Club has been doing great things. This completely volunteer-run organization has seen new renovations to the facility, new programs, offered by their club, from their expansion, insulation, and new siding, to developing the junior girls curling team and starting up a Little Rockers six to nine year old program. Chosen from amongst the 33 members of the Nova Scotia Curling Association, Club President Ray Bates and Vice President Maurice Landry accepted the award for Organization of the Year this past June 8th. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to congratulate the Shedabuckter Curling Club for winning this prestigious award and wish them another season of fun and competition as we start the 2019-2020 curling season. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Picto Centre. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, if there is any case history of the ideal example of the benefit of the Dode Clause of the WCB Act, Daryl McKinnon of Picto County is that perfect example. Under Section 5.1 of the Act, a worker making a claim for compensation is entitled to receive the benefit of the doubt. Under Section 5.2 of the Act, if the factors in favour of the worker's claim are just as likely, likely as the factors against, the matter is resolved in the worker's favour. In other words, Mr. Speaker, Section 187 of the Act sets out the benefit of the doubt, which means an issue must be resolved in a worker's favour if there is doubt about the issue and the disputed possibilities are evenly balanced. Upon examination of the specialist medical findings, there is absolutely no doubt that Mr. McKinnon should be receiving his benefits. However, WCB continued to wear him down, hoping that he will gradually give up, that the waiting and uncertainty and the incredible frustration will force him to simply move on. Mr. McKinnon will not give up or wear down. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Halifax Needham. Oh. I rise to congratulate Common Good Solutions and a small group of social entrepreneurs, Rodney 
Small, Josh Creighton, Bradley Day, Lauren Sears, and David Upton on their participation in the Social Enterprise World Forum, which has just concluded in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. And I thank them for their leadership in attracting the next Social Enterprise World Forum to be held in Halifax, in Nova Scotia, from September 23rd to 25th next year. Social enterprises use market-based business models to achieve social and environmental purposes. There are many examples, including New Dawn, made with local and Lake City woodworkers. Lauren Sears, Managing Director of Common Good Solutions, the organization which will host the forum, told delegates Halifax is the epicenter for social enterprise in Canada. And indeed, I am very glad and grateful that the epicenter of the epicenter is Common Good Solutions, located in Halifax Needham. Congratulations to them all. The Honourable Member for Halifax Armdale. Mr. Speaker, October 2nd marked International Walk to School Day. The day is a global event that involves students, staff, family members from over 40 countries walking and biking to school on the same day. The event has become part of a movement for year-round safe routes to, health, to school and a celebration of the health and social benefits of walking to school with peers. I'm so pleased when I heard that almost 70% of students at Springvale Elementary in Armdale took part. They walked through Fairmount Springvale and used their Chain of Lakes trail to get to school, and some in the Stone Ridge community accessed the trail through a path along a short section of Dumbrack. Mr. Speaker, currently this path is not suitable for young children, and for this reason, I scheduled a meeting with HRM Engineering and Active Transportation staff this month and walked all along the site and viewed preliminary plan plans for a Greenway Connector project. I'm pleased to see pedestrian safety and comfort being prioritized in our community and look forward to the project's completion. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Colchester, Muscadabit Valley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to congratulate a Stuyak native who has taken a step up in his career. After serving as assistant coach for the Mount Allison Mounties women's volleyball team, 27-year-old Robbie Krause has been selected as their head coach this year. With a great deal of coaching experience at club, high school, and university levels, he plans to bring a competitive and positive mindset to the team this year. Last year, the team qualified for playoffs, but lost in the conference semifinals to Mount St. Vincent. It appears that he plans to take the team further this year. So I wish Robbie all the best in this new venture. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Clayton Park West. Mr. Speaker, I would like to recognize an outstanding entrepreneur in our community in, in Clayton Park West. Earlier this summer, I had the pleasure of attending the grand opening of a new Syrian ice cream shop, Buza Imesa. The owner, Samar al Johader, immigrated here with his family three years ago from Syria, where he owned a similar shop for 11 years. Upon coming to Nova Scotia, he worked very hard to bring his delicious treats here, and his dream finally came reality thanks to Dr. Haddad. His wonderful ice cream is made from a resin called Mystic, which has many medicinal benefits and allows it to be denser than the traditional ice cream that is found here. Samuel serves many flavors, including chocolate, mango, banana, and lemon. However, my personal favorite is his popular rolled pistachio ice cream. Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate Samuel and his family on opening such a successful business, and I wish him the best in the future. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Lunenburg. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize Zach Zink of Pine Grove, who is attending Ava Maria University in Naples, Florida, on a baseball scholarship for the next three years. At the age of three, Zach began playing baseball and quickly fell in love with the sport. Zach 2019-20 baseball season started with an elbow injury that threatened to end his budding baseball career. Persevering through the setback, Zach healed from the injury and went on to have a show-stopping season. When Eva Marie University scouts saw Zach, they were drawn to his pitching abilities, his attitude on the mound, and his work ethic. They offered him a scholarship valued at $18,000. Zach's dream of playing professional baseball was coming true. Zach said, I know that if you want something like this, then you have to be willing to work for it. I have always had great support from my family and friends. Mr. Speaker, I ask that you and all members of this House of Assembly please join me in congratulating Zach Sink on his scholarship and wish him well in, his pursuing, in pursuing his dreams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
The Honourable Member for Waverly Fall River Beaverbank. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to thank Sandra Carr, longtime community volunteer, for spearheading a community effort to equip the Fall River LWF Community Hall with an automated uh, external defibrillator, AED. Sandra is part of our local seniors group who regularly meet uh, at the hall and is also on the board member of the hall itself. Placing the a AED in our organizational of community can potentially save lives. AED has proven to be one of the most important tools in saving the life of someone suffering sudden cardiac arrest. Mr. Speaker, please join me in thanking all the community members, volunteers, fire departments, Lions Club, and especially Sandra for equipping, for equipping our community hall with the life-saving device. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Waverly Fall River Beaver Bank. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to congratulate Cora Johnson, a swimmer from Fletcher's Lake, on competing and competing six medals at the uh, Provincial Swimming Championships. Cora, 14 years old, swims with the Canada Games Central Swim Academy. Cora took home five silver medals and one bronze. Mr. Speaker, I would like uh, also like to congratulate Cora on being one of the 100 swimmers from Canadian Games Center squad, squad to make the uh, Nova Scotia All-Star swim team. Please join me in congratulating Cora on her success and wish her the best in the future swim competitions. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Halifax Atlantic. Mr. Speaker, on September 23rd, stra tragedy struck the community of Greystone. Elizabeth Marie Cole dropped her young daughter off at Rocking Stone School, and before she could leave the school grounds, she collapsed, and shortly mm -hmm. after, she passed. Elizabeth was someone we've all known for decades, and she was a gentle soul, and I want her two young daughters to know that. Thank you to the teachers for reacting and shielding the young girls and to the community for being there, and to Elizabeth Cox for stepping up to take those young girls into her home and to treat them like her own. Rest in peace, Elizabeth, and to Haley and Rachel, your mom was and is an angel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Lunenburg. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize Salt Box Brewing Company of Mahone Bay for raising over $7,600 for two programs in our community. Salt Box President George Anderson said that the support of the community-based <coughs> initiatives is the core value of the company. The Salt Box organized two successful community events in 2019, the first being the Salt Box Derby, which raised $4,100, and all proceeds went to support the Bayview Community School Breakfast Program. The second event, which raised $3,500, was a joint effort between the Canadian Dory Racing Association of Lunenburg and the Salt Box, who organized the Dory Racing Challenge in Mahone Bay and Bridgewater. All proceeds went to support the Canadian Dory Ra Racing Association. And I must say, the member from Lunenburg West did quite well in that race. The Salt Box has also created a specialty labeled beer with the proceeds of this beer to help fund the training of dogs to support veterans and first responders experiencing PTSD. Mr. Speaker, I ask that you and all members of this House of Assembly join me in recognizing the Salt Box Brewing Company for their continued support for community based initiatives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Clayton Park West. Mr. Speaker, I would like to recognize Kimberly Witherspoon, an active community leader in Clayton Park West. Kimberly lived in our community from 2004 until 2008 and returned in 2014. Her volunteer efforts have began <clears throat> when she was in high school and have continued ever since. I have had the pleasure of speaking with Kimberly at many of our community cleanups, where she has shared her passion for keeping our riding clean. Kimberly has demonstrated a keen interest in the environment, and my office very much appreciates her help in our litter prevention in initiative. <coughs> Excuse me. Kimberly has also volunteered for several organizations in the Maritimes, including the Nova Scotia Royal International Tattoo, the Canadian County Music Awards, and the East Coast Music Awards. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank Kimberly for everything she does in our community. It is people like her that make the biggest difference. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Lunenburg West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize the Town of Ridgewater, the winner 
of the 2019 Smart Cities Challenge. On May the 14th, Infrastructure Canada made the exciting announcement that Bridgewater was the winner of the National Competition's $5 million prize category. The community's proposal for an energy poverty reduction program submitted in March was designed to lift residents out of energy poverty, starting with reducing the energy poverty rate by 20% by 2025. The application focused on Bridgewater's growing need for affordable, clean and reliable energy, which is out of reach to many residents. Estimates show that around 38% of Bridgewater households are unable to meet their basic energy and transportation needs. I ask all members of the Nova Scotia Legislature to join me in congratulating the Town of Bridgewater, its community partners and residents for the prestigious win and for creating an exciting plan of action to reduce energy poverty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Bedford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to congratulate All Saints Anglican Church on 150 years of service to the community of Bedford and a surrounding area. The church and parish have a long history. Its cemetery dates back to the late 1800s, and the current building is 114 years old. The church continues, however, to move with the times, hosting, for example, sessions for single parents, a community outreach program for seniors called Coffee and Conversations, a youth group, and it initiated a family-friendly service on select Sunday afternoons known as Messy Church. And they also have an annual blessing of the animals, which is not the same as Messy Church. All Saints has also provided space and supports to groups such as the Scouts, Girl Guides, and Alcoholics Anonymous, and its associated organizations. The Parish Hall is home to the Bedford Players Community Theatre, which presents theatrical work several times a year. As I've demonstrated, Mr. Speaker, All Saints Anglican Church has a big presence in Bedford. I want to congratulate its leadership and parishioners, wish them all the best as they celebrate on November 3rd. I know the next 150 years will be just as significant for All Saints and Bedford. Thank you. The Honourable Government House Leader. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would you please call address and reply? We'll now call address and reply. The Honourable Member for Sydney River, Myra Lewisburg. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I can assure all members this won't be an hour. It's going to be pretty short and sweet. <laughs> uh, I'd just like to say I'm thankful for the opportunity to stand here and speak tonight. Uh, Something I definitely didn't think I'd ever be doing in my lifetime, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, here I am, uh, pr proud to be here and happy to represent uh, the constituency of Sydney River Mar Lewisburg. Uh, first, I'd like to thank my wife, uh, Jen. Uh, definitely my, my strongest supporter. Uh, we've been through a lot over the last 12 years. Uh, she's home now with her two-year-old. She's seven months pregnant herself. God love her. <laughs> so uh, she's working a lot harder than I am, I think. <laughs> uh, she's actually the one who put the idea in my head to do this in the first place. Actually, uh, both of us coming from a healthcare background, she knows it's something I've always had a kind of a drive and a passion myself in. Uh, I have to thank Marie, although she's only two. She's not going to remember any of this, anyways. But. <laughs> God love her. Uh, and I'd like to thank Benson. Uh, he's my dog, my golden doodle. Uh, man's, man's best friend and the best uh, picture of stress reduction you can ask for. Uh, and then I'd like to thank my mom. Uh, she's not a very political person uh, whatsoever. Uh, we kind of come from a hardworking lobster fishing, uh, salt of the earth type of family. Um, and I drug her into this mess in the middle of the summer. <laughs> and, uh, she came all, all hands aboard, uh, whether it was through signs or phones or uh, just with her posit positivity. And I, I'd have to thank her for, for showing me the, the values and morals, I think, of respect and compassion uh, for everybody. Uh, and I'd also like to thank Virginia, my mother-in-law, uh, actually one of my best friends, uh, as weird as that sounds. <laughs> yeah. She was my, uh, my campaign driver. Uh, for 60 hours a week, uh, most areas with no cell service. <laughs> so uh, she's awesome. Uh, just relentless uh, energy and passion. Uh, I wouldn't be here without her for sure. Uh, I'd like to thank my brother, uh, Kyle. Uh, probably still boggles his mind that he was putting signs in the ground for me uh, 
and he cl collected them as well. Uh, so I definitely appreciate that. And my sister-in-laws are also very uh, busy professional women. Uh, did doors, phones, signs, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, I'd also like to mention my dad. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away in 2011 uh, from a rare blood disorder. Uh, he was a lobster fisherman his entire life in Port Morion. Uh, very hardworking, uh, traditional man, uh, I would say. And uh, anyways, we spent about nine months up here in Halifax, so the eighth, eighth, uh, eighth floor of the VG at the hematology unit, uh, and isolation precautions. So I don't know if any, that's challenging at the best of times, not for a, just a patient, but also a family member. Uh, so I'll have to think of what he would, uh, what he would say if he thought I was a, a politician. <laughs> yeah. Probably, what, what in the hell are you thinking? <laughs> Uh, I'd have to say he probably would be proud, I think. I don't know. But I'd like to tell myself that he would be. <laughs> uh, just talk a little bit about the constituency. It's a very vast, uh, beautiful constituency, I think, uh, from Gabrus to Lewisburg to, to Myra to Duncan to Port Morion. Uh, I was very fortunate in my campaign to have people from all over the constituency help me. Uh, some of them just got to know me within the summer, basically, which is, is, is crazy, really. Um, to show that sort of commitment, you know, day in, day out. Uh, there's a few people I'd like to thank specifically. I'll probably miss somebody, but it is what it is. <laughs> uh, Rob and Ruth Andrews uh, from Marion Bridge. Uh, Paul Morrison from Coxie. Hugh and Bernice Kennedy from Donkin. Uh, Wendy and Dave McPhail from Sydney River. Uh, Eleanor and Glenn Shepard uh, from Lewisburg. Julie Forgeron from Manadou. And uh, Lucille Mackey from Howie Center. Uh, just to name a few. Now that I'm home a little bit, uh, not too much because the house is sitting, obviously, but uh, people come up, to, come up to me and I say, I can't believe you of all people got into politics. <laughs> and what, like, why did you get involved, I guess, is what, is what they're asking me. And uh, in all honesty, I think, you know, coming from a healthcare background in Cape Breton, uh, you know, this, was, this wasn't on my radar a year ago. I, tell you, I can tell you all that right now, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, I mean, you just get, you just get fed up and you want to... Uh, you want to advocate for change uh, for where you live. And uh, I'm not placing blame on anyone. I think we all have to work together to fix this problem anyways. Uh, but to be totally honest, that's why I did, I did get involved. I do think Cape Breton pr presents its own unique set of circumstances, uh, like chronically high unemployment, uh, childhood poverty. I mean, people are just having a hard time making ends meet in Cape Breton, to be honest, generally speaking. Uh, I know most of the people I graduate high school with are either out west, they're in the mainland, or they're somewhere else, basically, uh, which is unfortunate. And we need these young families in Cape Breton to raise families and to stick around, basically, and uh, contribute to society, I think. I don't think this is going to be an easy fix uh, for any of us. I think we have a, a tough road ahead of us, um, regardless of party, to be honest with you. Uh, so I think it's important that we collaborate and work together. Uh, especially when it comes to issues like this uh, for the whole province. Uh, I do think it's unfortunate, uh, Cape Breton, I know I'm biased, <laughs> but it's, uh, okay. it's often a, for, a forgotten about island at times uh, through economic growth and opportunity, you know. We've heard a lot this session about population and economic growth and, uh, and Cape Breton's actually the opposite. It's all the opposite actually, uh, which is unfortunate because uh, we're not involved in the, we're not in the up and up, that's for sure. And uh, that has to change, I think, to be honest. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons, hopefully, I can, I can help and try my best. Uh, my constituency is very rural. Uh, very, very rural, actually. Mostly no cell service, like I said, in most areas. Uh, a lot of hardworking uh, people in fishing communities. Uh, manual labor, small businesses, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, quite frankly, I think they need help in a lot of different ways. Uh, I'm not sure what that is specifically right now, uh, but I know we have to advocate for these people. Uh, like I said, I grew up in Donka most of my life. Uh, a lot of time at the rink with my dad, my brother. Uh, I was actually lobster fishing from the age of 12 till about 26. Uh, for the first five or six years, I was, I was the bait boy. <laughs> uh, at that time, we fished what was called a rig and a half. So that's about 413 traps of just cutting bait, 
about 14, 15, 15 hours a day. So I really appreciated my next job after that one, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, I then moved on to healthcare. Uh, I actually did the program with my wife together, uh, every class, every cl clinical placement, every night home together, and we actually became closer than ever, I have to say. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to work in Glace Bay, uh, cardiac, med surge, uh, geriatric population, uh, specialized in mental health and addictions the last number of years. Uh, so I'm kind of, I've been in, around in the healthcare field for sure. And everywhere has its own unique concerns. Uh, but I think the one common element they have is they, they do need help. And uh, I think it, we, they need help right now, I think, to be honest. Uh, I would just like to thank the healthcare providers across the province, uh, especially in Cape Breton. Uh, A lot of good colleagues uh, working in tough conditions. Uh, so it's stressful and it's, it, it wears you down. I know, I know there because I've, I've done it. Uh, it burns you out, uh, impacts your family life, impacts how you can raise your children. It impacts everything and it is, it's tough right now. It's, it's tough sledding in Cape Breton for sure. And um, I'm very hopeful that we can all work together and, uh, and try to help, help those people here. And like I said, these are all not an easy fix. I know this, is, this, this isn't going to happen overnight. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a fairy tale by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but I think the solutions need to start now and they need to start by us working together. Uh, I'd also like to thank all members of this house uh, for being so kind and respectful, uh, courteous, <laughs> sharing some knowledge and some wisdom. Uh, I'd like to thank members of my own caucus, uh, especially the, the young veterans in the first two rows in front of me. <laughs> It's, uh, it's quite the orientation. <laughs> I'd like to thank our leader, uh, Tim. I uh, sweated on the doorsteps for two weeks in Cape Breton heat for 30 degrees, and uh, I still haven't seen him eat yet, I don't think. Uh, I do think he's relentless. Uh, his, his drive is intense. I think that's why he will be the next premier. Train well. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyways, that's all I have to say. So to say thank you to everyone. That's it. <laughs> the Honorable Government House Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I congratulate the member from Sydney River, Mar Lewisburg. Uh, I've know, known him for many years as, a, as an athlete. He's a, a beast of a hockey player, shoots the puck real hard, and I still got scars on my wrist from playing him in a league. He's, uh, he's not real polite out there, but he's hard as nails. And uh, I do want to say uh, for the member, for the record, uh, I had the absolute pleasure of knowing his dad, Johnny, and I can tell him uh, that uh, his dad would be very proud to see what he's become today. So, very well done. And with that, Mr. Speaker, would you please call public bills for third reading? We'll now call public bills for third reading. Mr. Speaker, would you please call bill number 152, the Plastic Bags Reduction Act? We'll now call bill number 152, the Plastic Bags Reduction Act. The Honourable Minister of the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move Bill 152, an act to reduce plastic bags, be now read a third time. The Honourable Member for Sackville Beaver Bank. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the other day, uh, last week, I stood up. It was late, it was dark, and uh, I went on for a long time. I think I'm going to do the same thing tonight, and then that way we'll... <laughs> we're going to stop meeting in the night. We'll do everything in the afternoon because Brad doesn't talk too much then, right? So, Mr. Speaker, I, uh, our, our caucus uh, does support this bill. Unfortunately, uh, it's not because it's a perfect bill. It's because uh, it's better than nothing at the moment. And uh, that's, that's not really the greatest reason to support it. I wish uh, there were some other uh, reasons, but we will uh, be basing it on that. Mr. Speaker, I, uh, ironically, our, uh, our leader and our caucus had a very similar bill to this that we were going to bring forward, uh, but the government uh, kind of beat us to the punch on it, uh, which is good, but uh, 
we we certainly feel that uh, the proposal that we were going to bring forward would have been much more comprehensive than uh, than this particular bill that's before us now. It uh, I really doesn't seem to go far enough to uh, dealing with the issues of single-use plastics. Uh, it certainly could have been, and I'm, I'm hoping uh, may possibly be expanded at some point in time. Given the, uh, the title of the bill, I highly doubt that. This seems to be very uh, specific to plastic bags, uh, but it would have been nice to be able to address all single-use plastics, whether that be uh, single-use water bottles, uh, straws, or uh, even covers for uh, hot coffee cups and things like that. So we would have liked to have been able to see that. The other issue that uh, really seems to be of a concern, and I, I, rose this, I raised this in this house uh, earlier on, that uh, although we are glad to see that uh, the government's taking a lead across this province and, and setting this for all municipalities so that there won't be a uh, patchwork across the province on how municipalities are to deal with single-use plastic bags, we are, uh, would have liked to have seen something that was actually uh, more in line with the other Atlantic province provinces. Um, it makes it easier for people who shop, who uh, go to New Brunswick or PEI. And, and additionally, as I spoke in, in previous, uh, in regards to PEIs, uh, there does seem to be some uh, dissentives there to uh, using other options other than single-use plastic, i.e. Uh, either paper or uh, cloth or something else. And a lot of times the unfortunate thing about those is although they uh, people see them as a, a good alternative. They actually uh, are uh, a higher uh, consumption of uh, carbon. They, they increase our carbon footprint. They take more to, uh, to uh, make those bags and in some cases uh, have to be used so many times over and above uh, what a plastic bag is to uh, be able to meet the the environmental cost to develop it. So um, I know that in the uh, PEI, I know that the minister did say, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that the minister did say that uh, he thought PEI was going to revisit the uh, the part in their bill where they charge for both paper and cloth. Uh, this doesn't address that in this province in this bill that's before us, and I really think that uh, that's something that uh, we're missing. I, th I think we should be be looking at that. We certainly don't want to see uh, uh, any un. Uh, unpredicted consequences that comes out of this and and uh, you know studies have certainly shown that going to uh, paper the cost of uh, both on municipalities as well as the environment is almost uh, seven times sometimes uh, the weight of the paper seven times that of plastic and and uh, now one of those uh, non -in non intended consequences will be municipalities having to deal with uh, with paper where uh, if there was a charge that would try to limit those so we certainly don't want to see uh, uh, see an increase of uh, paper bags going into landfills either mr speaker <clears throat> I, uh, given the, uh, given what I just uh, sat through in law amendments uh, in regards to uh, another bill before this House of Sustainability Goals Act, um, and uh, this one here, I really, uh, comparing that to the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, um, you know, which did highlight the 10 to 12 years to start taking climate change seriously. Given that, given that this government held a uh, climate emergency, uh, I think it was the first day that we met here in the House, um, and given that this doesn't address everything that it should be addressing, it doesn't seem to go far enough. I certainly, once again, question uh, how much of a uh, emergency government really thinks the environment is. Um, you know, one of the some of the pillars in regards to uh, to plastics and to waste, of course, is refuse, reduce, recycle, and uh, and this doesn't hit all of those. But uh, as I said, I guess it's better than uh, than what it is uh, than what we have currently. So, even though the uh, it doesn't address paper bags and a charge to them, the environmental footprint of paper, of course, as I said, is more significant. 
Um, even though it doesn't have all those things, as I said in my initial statement, it is better than what we have now. So from that perspective, uh, we'll be supporting what's here before us now. The Honorable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We in the NDP regard this as welcome legislation. There are, there are, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> and there are, and there are, uh, there are so many uh, things about the context of this legislation that are now known so incontrovertibly. We know that. Marine plastic pollution has increased tenfold since 1980, and that 80% of all marine debris is composed of plastics. As the UN report of the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform and by Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services established earlier this year, we know that marine plastic pollution is directly affecting today 267 species, including 86% of marine turtles, 44% of seabirds and 43% of marine animals. In a province as defined by the ocean as Nova Scotia is, and where the health of the ocean is so determinative for us, both in the present and in our future, a ban on single-use plastic bags uh, really has just the status of common sense. That is to say, it's time. It's time for Nova Scotia to join the range of jurisdictions from PEI on the East Coast to Victoria on the West Coast that have enacted bans on single-use plastic bags. And I think uh, that this is a fitting moment uh, for us to acknowledge the 